Good evening. It's Tuesday, March 12th, and welcome back to Everyday Talk 24-7. Spring's getting a little bit early here in uh, the Midlands of South Carolina, but uh, really great to be with you tonight. I'm going to continue looking at Ephesians, this theme of knowing God better, and I'm just super excited to go through things that I've looked at for years and see just new life, new rich truth come into them. Nothing new in the sense of um, what's actually being taught, but new in the sense of application of how the Word of God really is living and active. And as we study it, as we live it, as we work through it, as we trust God, as we know God better, the Word becomes richer and just pours itself out to us. So I pray that we'll see that tonight. Tonight the title is How to Use Anger for Good. Anger is a powerful thing. But it's an attribute of God. It's a communicable attribute of God. That means that it's an attribute that God gives to us. The only issue is how do we use it? Do we use it in a way that honors Him to bring about good? Or do we use it in a way that honors us, which does nothing? Nothing any close to good. It only does everything but good. And Paul has good words for us to say. I think it's a familiar passage. You've probably heard this. I don't know how many times, but this is what he says in Ephesians chapter 4, verses 26 and 27. Be angry and do not sin. Don't let the sun go down on your anger, and don't give the devil a foothold an opportunity. Typically, the opening words here, be angry and do not sin, sometimes are, you know, we, it gets translated in such a way that when you're angry, do good. Don't let the anger get a hold of you. And that's true. But the translations of some of our good ones say this. Be angry and do not sin. It's two things. So the first thing is be angry. It's not wrong to be angry. Sometimes anger is called for. But when we do get angry, we can't sin. We can't use the anger for our own purposes. And then he says, don't let the sun go down on your anger. And don't give the devil a foothold, an opportunity to take control of your life. Now, just like when, when we looked at what Paul, was the previous verse, verse 25, when he's talking very, very clearly about speaking truthfully, and he quotes from Zechariah 8, tonight, Paul is quoting from Psalm 4. Paul uses the Old Testament to enrich his teaching, to give guidance to his teaching. So in Psalm 4, we read these words. David has been wrongly accused of something. It wasn't his fault. He's being challenged and accused of doing something he didn't do. So he's angry. But then he says in verse 3, Yahweh will hear when I call. He knows that God will hear him when he calls to him. Then he says, be angry, but do not sin. Exactly the same words that Paul uses. Be angry, do not sin. And then listen to this. Speak in your hearts upon your bed and keep quiet. See, this isn't so much, it, it's an application, but this is not so much about making up with someone before the night goes old. But what it's saying is, is in your heart, when you're lying in bed, keep quiet. Don't lose it and get angry at other people but deal with it before God. Tell him about the anger. Give him the opportunity to give you clarity and resolution. And then he says, sacrifice the right sacrifices and trust yourself to Yahweh. In other words, don't just sit there in the anger. Don't be passive. Do what God's called you to do. So now with that uh, beautiful context of Psalm 4, let's go back and look at what Paul is saying in this light. Let's take a look at Paul's words. First is, be angry. It's not wrong to be angry. God sees what is happening. Know him. Trust him in the anger. Remember, my anger will not bring about the righteous life that God desires, what James says. But I can be angry in the right way. So it's not wrong. But then immediately after that, both David and Paul warn us, don't sin. Don't take matters into your own hands. 
respond in a way that is trusting to God. Not passively, but aggressively. Trust God. Then the third point, don't allow your anger to remain. That's where Paul says, don't let the sun go down on your anger. David says, speak in your heart to God on your bed. Get it dealt with right there. Trust him. And then be quiet before God. Dale Ralph Davis, again, use him a lot. Great commentary on Psalm 4. He says, the most godly thing you can do when you get angry is to keep your mouth shut. And we all need that. I need that. Because when we get angry, we tend to say things that we shouldn't say. So we keep our mouths shut. We trust God to know what to do. And then find the way that will bring honor to God. You see, righteous anger, if it is righteous anger, righteous anger results in peace. My anger, your anger, results in anger, upset, bitterness, chaos, strife getting even. See, those things are not what God's called us to. Righteous anger, if we do what God's called us to do in His way, then that righteous anger will result in peace. That's how anger can do good for you and me. And then lastly, Paul says, don't give the devil space in your head. In other words, don't give the, 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 the devil a foothold, a place to put his foot, a place to hang out. Don't let him stay with you. Don't let him hang around past the evening. That's what Paul and David are trying to tell us. Don't let your anger run past the evening. Because if you do, you're inviting the devil in. You're inviting him to wreak havoc upon you. That's what we're being warned against here. We want to avoid bitterness. See, when I let anger hang around, I distance myself from God. This is the most important thing. I lose the opportunity to deepen and know Him more closely, to know Him better. So instead of knowing God better, you and I become mired in our anger, and we just reap its bitter fruit. And we're hurt, and the people that we love hurt. But here's the positive things we can do with this. This is what Paul is giving us. You can leave room for God's visions, vengeance. Leave room for God's vengeance. We see that in Romans 12. God knows what's happening. You can know him and trust him. He'll make things right. I can let God take care of that. I can take steps to end whatever's going wrong. If there's abuse going on, you're not supposed to take it. You find ways to get out. Get people to help you get out. We're not supposed to live in abuse. Find a positive way to end the abuse. Don't just sit there and be sullen and be upset and be angry and then feel bad you're being angry and let the cycle, you know, repeat. Take steps. Go to the authorities. Go to someone. Get help. Don't let the abuse continue. You can return good for evil. Again, drawing from Romans 12. I can be aggressive. I can take the upper hand. I can have compassion for the person I'm angry at. Maybe there's an opportunity to help them to reach out to them instead of just being hurt and offended, but to reach out. Again, in everything except abuse, this is exactly what we ought to do. We can, by, by using anger for good, by seeing the opportunity, seizing it, then I can extinguish the enemy's arrows. Remember, Paul's going to talk more about this in chapter 6 of Ephesians. The enemy is shooting arrows at you and me all the time. He wants us to fall in anger and to be captured by it. And then the most important thing <clears throat> is that if I see anger as an opportunity for good and not an opportunity to vent and get vengeance myself, if I see it for good in this way, I have the benefit, the blessing the beauty of knowing God better, which is why Paul starts in Ephesians chapter 1, and he says, I'm writing this, my earnest prayer is that you will know God better. And by using anger for good in the way that God intended us to, we can know him better. What a beautiful thing that is. 
Like that lion, that powerful lion that's in the uh, thumbnail. We can turn anger and use it for good and then not live with anger, but live with trust in God, knowing him and knowing he will take our cause, just like David knew that God would take his cause in Psalm 4. And that's the thought for this night. Use anger for good and let, let the rich word of God shape us instead of our own bitterness. You have a great evening. Again, love your thoughts, your feedback. This is important things for us, important for me. You have a great evening, and Lord willing, we'll see you tomorrow. Good night. Thank you for watching. May God richly bless you as you seek to live for His glory.